Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Buppet. Welcome back to another StarCraft 2 Daily Masters. Got an awesome PVT for you here today. So let's start off by checking out the players. Down the bottom right side of the map, we do have Mr. Hero. He is 21 years old from South Korea, plays for the CJ Entis team. And yeah, he's pretty awesome. I've seen quite a few games of him, so should be some very, very good stuff here. And his opponent up the top left side of the map, Mr. Polt. We've seen a lot of stuff from Mr. Polt. Over is actually one of the very first high level Masters players car that I cast way back when. I think mainly because I was casting like Zotac and go for SC2 and I think he was in a few of them so definitely cast him a bit. He's 25 years old from South Korea, sponsored by the CM Storm and I Buy Power. And I think CM Storm, yeah, yeah, so he's sponsored by them. I don't know if they're a team or if they're just a sponsor but it says sponsored by so I assume they're just a sponsor. So yeah, pretty good stuff there. We do have a Reaper coming out, that's the first Reaper to come out so far, just an SCV scouting out for the location of the base so far because of course not much point having a reaper unless you actually know where the opposing base is looks like he's going to be going for a fast expansion right here off one barracks and also got the gas which is of course to build the reaper so expansion as fast as he possibly can while still going for the reaper and Mr. Hero going for his own expansion off the cyber core so should have enough to build a mothership core and a stalker if he wants it as well and definitely will be able to deal with the Reaper when it comes in. Unfortunately, the scouting not quite working out for Mr. Polt. He knew that this one was empty. He goes for this one. It says that this one is empty as well. So, very, very unfortunate. Yeah, it, was a, it was a half decent chance he was going to find the base early on, but did not. And now, Mr. Hero is going to have more than enough time to get this uh, Stalker out. The Mothership Core was going to be out at the right time anyway, but Mothership Core not nearly as good as the Stalker at dealing with the Reaper because of course the Reaper is just so fast and the Mothership Core not as fast. So here he goes going up there, the Mothership Core though watching out for it very very nicely and this guy gets chased away straight away so not going to be able to find a way in. We do have a Stargate coming down for Mr. Oracles, uh, Mr. Hero sorry. Oh the Stalker coming out at the perfect time and this guy just gonna have to run for it. There's no chance he can do anything more, any uh, at all, I think, I mean, there's a Stalker there, there's a Mothership Core, so that's pretty much it. So we've got the Double Gas, we've got the Stargate, probably going to be some Oracles coming over. And, of course, the well, this is a Forge, so the Stargate all the way over there. And, no, Mr. Mr. Polt did not scout there, so it's no longer even about hitting stuff. I feel like it's just about getting a scout off, so he's going to try and find a way in here. I felt he could have broken through there because the Stalker was over the other side, but... He's got to get all the way over to here to actually jump up. There's no way to jump up over here. This is a double high cliff and there's a gap over there. So, no, he's got to get all the way close to the natural to actually jump in. And this stalk is not going to let that happen. May have to be a suicide run to actually get up there and do the full scout. So here he goes, going for the scout. Here he goes, going around the backside. Should be able to see everything. Sees the back of the forge. Sees the stargate with the Can He Tell Us an Oracle coming out. I do not know, but... He does go down, and yes, he, he scouted the Stargate though, which is the important thing. So, building a Widow Mine, building a couple of Marines, maybe building a Missile Turret. Don't know, Missile Turret would not be a bad idea at the moment, but he's still waiting on the Evo Chamber actually, so he can't build Missile Turrets yet. I'm sure if he could, then he would. Here comes the Stalker coming in, and sees a whole bunch of Marines, so actually shooting them a little bit. Is Hero trying to draw out the Marines? I believe he is, so now he's just going to go run for it, and Polt, wisely, not chasing, but then again, he's not moving the Marines back over here, and he definitely needs to, although there is a Widow Mine right there, so he's managed to get that out in time, oh, beautiful, beautiful play there from Polt, so getting the Widow Mine out exactly when he needed to, and it was a little bit tight, but he got it out in time, and suddenly, Hero's like, oh, my two-prong attack, not going to be able to work, you see he's got two more Stalkers moving out there, Preparing to draw these guys out even more so when the Marines backed off he could get in there He could take out the bunker maybe sneak into the main base do some good stuff there, but It did not happen right there. It did not happen at all. Is this guy? Oh, there is room there. And here we go. There's another Widow Mine coming over here 
to uh, watch for the Oracle going in the other direction. So Holt doing a great job there. The Widow Mine, yeah, here's the Widow Mine over there. So waiting, and so far, Holt looks like he's firmly uh, in a good spot right here. He's down on workers, which is understandable because he's going against a Protoss and they chrono boost everything, but he's got a bunch of mules out, so he's still doing a fairly good job of keeping up on the economy. And Mr. Hero looks like he's going in for some high tech here. Yeah, Hallucinate Phoenix is going to be going for Scout, but he's going in to the serious mid game plate right here. So we got six gateways coming down. We got the Templar archives right now. We got Zealot Leagues coming out. So he's looking for mainly low ground sort of stuff. So doing a lot of storms, Zealot Leagues, and stuff like that. I suppose we will probably be seeing Colossus at some point. But the thing is, Protoss players mainly go for Colossus and then they follow it up with High Templars and Storms once the Vikings start coming out. Mr. Hero is going the other direction. He's going for Storms first and then he's going to maybe follow it up with Colossus. Which gives him an advantage because Polt, most Terran players will not go for a Ghost Academy early on in the game. They will not expect it. They'll have something available. I mean, they'll always have a uh, at least one starport with a reactor because they've been building a ton of medevacs. So they'll be able to switch into Vikings relatively easy, but as far as dealing with storms early on, it's very, very difficult because you have to build the Ghost Academy and then you have to be able to build the Ghosts. And not only do you need that, but you also need a bunch of barracks with tech labs and they're not always available. A lot of players just like to spam a ton of Marines, which means a ton of barracks with reactors. But Mr. Mr. Polt here actually has three barracks with tech labs, so he should be okay right there. So here we go, this bunch are coming out. Looks like the medevacs did get a little bit shot up right there. So we're going to be seeing exactly how this comes. The High Templars have been seen by Mr. Polt. I'm pretty sure he may have spotted them there. Yeah, did he? Did he? I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, actually. I'm not 100% sure if he got vision up that cliff. If he got vision up the cliff, he would have seen them. And then he would be taken about, but yeah, I just I do not know. I don't know where we've seen him, and definitely he needs he needs to check out those high templars right now. He needs to get the ghost place coming down asap, ng bay armory coming out. This is all standard stuff. We do have a viking coming out as well. So my guess is going to be that he did not see that high templar out on the field, and. That means that the first engagement he goes against with Hero is going to be devastating. He's going to lose a crap ton of units, and it's not going to be good for him. He's actually taken all the High Templars away in a War Prism, which is going to be pretty, pretty good stuff. Because it can, um, he can save up some High Templars in here, and then the first engagement he takes out a ton of damage. At the same time, he can do a ton of damage to this base, which doesn't have Missile turrets yet, so... He's going to be able to get two surprise hits off instead of the one he normally would. Here we go, the army's coming in. Polt has to have seen the High Templars in that base. He has to have. I mean, maybe I should keep an eye on his vision, but the High Templars are sort of in the back of this group. Maybe they're on the very edge of his vision? I don't know. I, I feel like he's, he's been a couple of... Here, he's going to see them now. He's going to see them now. There we go. Storm's coming down. On the SCVs, storms everywhere. If he didn't know there were High Templars so far, he's not ever going to figure it out. So he must know by now. And now we're going to be seeing the Ghost Academy. I would be extremely surprised if we don't. I mean, he's pumping up a bunch of um, Marauders, three Marauders at a time, which is going to be good at countering the High Templars because storms don't eat into them as badly. But still... I mean, it just doesn't make any sense not to build a Ghost Academy at this point. We'll see. I mean, he is a head-on army. I'll give him that. He's 107 over 67. He's behind on workers, so maybe he's just going bonkers. He's not thinking long, long-term game. He's not thinking late game. He's just thinking build up a massive army, go in there, and just wreck everything right now. And he's got the army. He needs to do it. He maybe he's just waiting for level two weapons. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, we do have one two for hero, one one for Polt. Waiting for level two weapons and armor would definitely be a good decision. And there we go. There's the Ghost Academy coming down as well as three extra barracks. So very, very nice stuff with Mr. Hero. He's building a robo facility. I believe he already had one. And there we go. There's a robotics site as well. No Colossus out on the field yet. 
What have we got going down here? Just a bunch more zealots coming in. Going to be taken out pretty quickly, but they do kill a fair amount of workers. The amount of workers that have actually been lost from Mr. Pulse so far is quite impressive. There we go. Storm starting to go down. And, I mean, he's going to have to get some ghosts really, really fast because I feel like Hero has got enough that with the inclusion of High Templars that he's going to be able to knock this back. There we go. Getting sideswiped a little bit there. Pulling back. So he's trying to double team it. All right, they're doing a pretty good job. But the storm's still going down in every single location right here. Let's do a bit of a zoom out so we can see everything. To sort of a wide area sort of play. And yeah, there we go. Moving in right here. See some more storms, but Pult is getting better at dodging them. And he's actually starting to look a little bit overwhelming here for the fact that he's dodging all those storms. Starting to get in there, but... I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's actually starting to turn around a bit, and Hero... Just, I mean, this is just fantastic. I would have thought automatically that Hero with that many storms and that many army would have been able to knock these guys out, but it hasn't gone down like that. Holt has done an excellent job dodging most of the storms, although he's really starting to take some heavy damage here. Those last few storms, plus the inclusion of two Archons, enough to send that army away. And I thought Holt may have actually been able to make it stick there, just make it happen, but the Archons just coming out of absolutely nowhere. And those last few storms just completely finished it for Pult. He's sending in some reinforcements right now. And we will see whether that's going to be enough. But I don't know. There's Colossus on the field right now. And Mr. Pult, he's only got one Viking. So I feel like, no. I mean, he can dodge all he wants. But I think these Colossus are going to finish him off. And he's got a very decent amount of forces. But there are Archons at the front. Actually, what's going to happen here? They're really pushing down. Storm's doing a great job. The Colossus finishing off this left side. Now going into the front. Warping in some Zealots at the front side. That's going to be great. Actually, Warprism lifting up the Colossus. Very, very impressive micro from Mr. Hero there. But no, just not enough units in the front. It looks like they're about to fall down. The Zealot and an Archon chasing this army away. One Colossus did survive. Another one coming in from the back lines. From the reinforcements. And this battle is so... So close right now. Archons, oh man, trying to move out to sort of save this force right here. But yeah, it's just being chased so badly. Here we go, a bunch of stalkers coming down. Should be able to harass those Vikings very, very, very nicely. And beautiful, beautiful stuff there. So managing to push off at the last minute with a bunch of stalkers and constantly warping in reinforcements. But you saw that battle was just so close on both sides of the field. Really, really really close from both sides of the field, but I am Pult, he still has the army advantage. It's just a matter of getting all those forces over there. What do we got going over here? Just a bunch of drops. Maybe looking to uh, take the fourth base out. Um, Pult has actually built up his worker numbers again, so he's going to have an economic advantage right here, including the mules. And, I mean, Hero hasn't really lost a lot of workers. I don't think he's lost any or three workers. It's barely anything, but he just hasn't been building as much as Pult has. Pult has kept on the workers for so long. Hero sort of dropped off once he reached the uh, 65 mark, which is a very decent amount, but there's, I mean, there's macro and then there's macro, and Pult is definitely going for the latter one, and he's looking like he's going to be exploding in the long term. Look at his army size, 126 over 92, looking like he's going to be very, very awesome here, and here we go. This bunch of forces just coming out, going to be moving in, moving on in, going to be seeing exactly what they can do over here, looking probably to try and snipe this third base down here, there we go, going down, and going to be seeing what they can do, the main army for the Protoss play coming in, the Vikings in a fairly good spot, but storms are coming down them, and they are in range of the Stalkers, need to pull back a little bit, which is exactly what they've done, Plus is coming around, not that many Vikings able to do it, but a flanking force coming on the top right, Actually hits a couple of classes for a few seconds. The Stalkers have taken out all the Vikings. Not many Marines left, but there are still a little bit. They're trying to snipe the last Colossus. They do manage to do it. And the Triple M forces have been mostly taken out. So most of the high-tech forces from Mr. Hero were destroyed. And Pult lost everything except his medevac. So the battles are so close here. Extremely close. And these guys, they can't really do too much. I mean... They're hoping to snipe a couple of medevacs, but against actual ground forces, not going to happen. And Hero giving the GG so far in this game. So, 
obviously deciding that he would just could not macro out enough. I mean, think about it. Pult, you say most of your meta, meta backs just needed to build a bunch of Marauders and Marines and just put them out on the field ASAP, which is quite easy for him to do. Hero, on the other hand, he could put out a ton of Zealots, a ton of Stalkers, all that sort of stuff, but he really needs the High Templar or the Colossus to back him up. He had a few High Templar, uh, so maybe, maybe he could have held on with those High Templar if they had enough for Storms. He could have done that, but I guess he just decided not to, and I mean, getting Colossus out enough to actually push that army back was going to be pretty much impossible. You may be able to get out two, but two Colossus would have cost 400 gas. It's very, very hard to do anything else at that point, and yeah, he just decided he was too far back against the wall, and Polt was just pumping out armies too fast. Look at this, 108 over 28 is just too much. He could not defend against that in the long term, so gave the GG and gave Polt the victory. So congratulations to Polt for a very, very nicely played game. Just absolutely awesome Terran macro going at it making it work and we've seen it a million times before but it's always impressive to watch this insane amount of units being produced on a consistent basis and I think he had 3-3 three, three as well so 3-3 three, three versus 2-3 very impressive so there we go thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this game I'll catch you guys tomorrow with another one this has been Harry Muppet see you guys later